Dear Father in heaven, your name is good, you are good, you're worthy to be praised. It is all about Jesus. It is all about your kingdom, O oh Lord. Should we ever be surrounded by the fire of the flame, should we ever be abandoned or should we ever be acclaimed, let it be Jesus. Let it be for us to live is Christ and dying is gain. Oh Jesus, may your name be magnified in us, in the people here today. May you be glorified. May you be lifted up. Holy Spirit, use this cracked pot of a vessel to give your message. And I pray your precious blood, Jesus, over this message, over this uh, testimony of what you're doing in these latter days, oh God, that you would uh, send your angels to get rid of every distracting, confounding spirit. You have no business here. We take authority over you by the blood and the power of Jesus Christ and by his cross. You have no business here. The Lord Jesus is king here in the hearts of the people here on this property in the word that is being spoken this is a message that glorifies the Lord Jesus Christ the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world and was risen from the dead on the third day for us so that we could be seated in the heavenly places and do as he did in Jesus name we stand against any lie or falsehood especially deception oh God break us Break us. Break us. Break us. Don't allow us to get ahead of ourselves. Have mercy on us. Flesh connected people. We have flesh that wants to creep in. Oh Jesus, may we stand against it. And always remember, it is dead. It is dead. You are risen. In Jesus' name, amen. And all of God's people said... God is good. And all the time. Hallelujah. Okay, I'm going to play a video clip. Okay, stink it. I thought I was going to cry. <laughs> okay, um, during our morning worship, um, uh, we uh, I I shared with a dear pastor um, who he has been uh, sharing things against the race war. We do we are in a race war. It's called the human race against sin. That's the war. It's the warfare for our souls. And he is, he, he's, he's just so blessed me with some of his messages. Um, and um, I shared with him a clip. In 2001, the week, the, the Sunday right after September 11, Pastor Carter, if you go online and you type in Run for Your Life, that message. Oh God. Um, we have been flooded by filth in this country. We have been flooded by deception. We have been numbed. We have been given a gospel of entertainment. We have been given a, a church, church entertainment. Are we feeding sheep? Or are we entertaining goats? As Charles Spurgeon said, this, this country, sadly, has gotten this. Everything's fine. Everything's great. It's not okay. It's not fine. But yet, they have accepted a doctrine, a belief. I want to say a deception. Go to church and have fun. Yes, Jesus is there. He loves you. He died for you. Believe and get saved. 
Yes, your Christian is in this wonderful. I'm going to play this clip. And Father God, I just pray your protection over this, over the message, and over Jesus having his witness. And I call heaven and earth to stand witness against this. He gave this warning. The full message is about an hour and 20 minutes. This is only five minute clip. It's called Run for Your Life. And he weeps because 9-11 was the start. 9-11 was the start of what is happening to the, this country that has been founded by God-fearing, Christ-loving people that have founded this country because of Jesus Christ. They said, if, if you read the primary documents, they said, we can take our chances with the filth and complacency in Holland, or we can take our chances, and I'm giving a summation, among the cold, the savages, the winter, and famine out there in the new world. We'll take our chances there. Because we do not want our children corrupted. They chose rather to suffer by the hands of Almighty God than by wicked men. And sadly, and, and, and this heritage, that, and, and they give thanks to God every time. I mean, look at every primary source document. And yet, there are delusions trying to rewrite history uh, to say, no, so-and-so is a mason, so-and-so, so-and-so is a mason, so-and-so, uh, they weren't Christians, they were looking for new opportunities. The only opportunity is Jesus Christ to preach to a dying world. And that is why they came. And yet the devil is so busy trying to erase history. 9-11 was a wake-up call from the Lord. Not 19 years later, COVID-19 hit as a wake-up call. So, in his full message, he speaks as to, what, as to the state of the church. The Lord brought it back up just na uh, this morning. And he shared that uh, he's saying, do you remember the warning I gave? I'm bringing the warning again. The deception is in full force. Pastor Carter Conlon of Times Square Church gave this warning. Uh, 19 years ago. He's been preaching on it ever since, uh, more or less. And now, truth is scattered in the streets. We saw in John 19, or 18, where Pilate calls Jesus in, and Jesus says, I came to testify to the truth. He stood as a living witness to the truth, and Pilate said, what is truth? He wasn't curious. Pilate knew there wasn't truth. He was living in just abject relativism. Folks, we're in danger. And it's time to rise up as a body of Christ. Body believers. Blood-bought body believers. And the message that is going to be spoken on this uh, after this clip the message is called Last Day's Deception. Do you love the truth in order to be saved? So, here's, here's the clip. I can find that. Listen to me like you've never listened to me. Ever in your life. We have got to lay our lives down for the purposes of God. This is not a Sunday school visit to the Church of Jesus Christ. This is not an invitation to have continuous good times.
the agenda. Run! Run from those who teach division between races and This is not about entertainment. Church is not about entertainment. Church is not. And this is all meeting time. It's not about having fun. That's the result. Not the goal. The goal is Jesus. The goal is holiness. The goal is looking like Him. I'm not saying be a dullard and, and not have a good time. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that you guys can't enjoy the outside. I'm saying seek Jesus first. It's not comfortable. I'll tell you that. He's going to expose everything in you. And we don't like it. But you know what? And this is the message. Um, what will happen is we are going into an era. And, and these are not my words. These are the Lord's words. We are going into an era. Truth will be non-existent. Except among those who do as Jesus did in the face of rulers and kings. Jesus went before Pilate and he said, I have come to testify to the truth. Friends, if it happened to, you, to, 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 to Christ, if it happened to Christ, it's going to happen to you. You will be brought before rulers and kings and employers and family members and other people of prominent position and the same thing will happen to you they will ask you all sorts of questions the Lord will fill your mouth and you will say I am here to testify to the truth not a truth the truth capital T Jesus who is the way truth and life and you'll get the same response what is truth? But know this. If it's the truth, and you try to bury it, it will live, and it'll rise. But if it's a lie, and you bury it, it'll rot. Now, how do we keep from... How do we keep from being deceived? I've heard that statement before. We're told to not be not to be deceived. Yes, that's correct. But what is the context of that phraseology? Go to Galatians six. You guys love God's word. Yes. Hallelujah. Maybe you were learning me, right? Galatians six. We'll, we'll read verse 1 through one through 5. Brothers, if someone is caught in any wrongdoing, you who are spiritual should restore such a person with a gentle spirit, watching out for yourselves, so you also won't be tempted. Carry one another's burdens. In this way, you will fulfill the law of Christ. Now, on the way to, the, to Golgotha, Simon of Cyrene picked up the cross of Christ. He bore his burden. Okay? Listen to this verse. Verse 3. For if anyone considers himself, for if anyone considers himself to be something, when he is nothing, he, de he deceives himself. But each person should examine his own work. Examine it how? Not by himself. We don't. We ought not compare ourselves by ourselves. What does Second Corinthians say? That we ought to stare into the mirror of Christ, that He transform us. Each one should examine his own work. Hold it up to Jesus. It sounds sort of kitsch. What would Jesus do? Guys, it's time to go back to that. Really do it. And then he will have 
a reason for boasting in himself alone and not in respect to someone else. For each person will have to carry his lo- own load. I heard a message recently by Leonard Ravenhill, the judgment seat of God, where he says, will you remind people of the goodness and the severity of God? Will you remind them that people pray in hell but nobody ever answers? Are you ready to stand before the Lord in His fire, eyes, feet, burnished bronze? Are you ready to stand before the Lord Jesus? Are you ready to face Him? Can you honestly say you have been upright? Now, I'm not judging anybody. I'm just letting you guys know. Can, can you... Do you love His appearing? Are you... Or are you... So... Not... I'm not ready for Jesus to come yet. I, I got... I got other things to do. Oh, I'll... I'll, I'll, I'll do what He's asking or... Yeah, no. No, you're, you're gonna... You're gonna stand before Him. Guys, He's holy. He's good. He wants us to to look like Him. We need to stop resisting His transformative work in us, treating us as His children. Let us love wanting to look like Him. Let us love that. Let us desire to there is a psalm I'm just reminded of it psalm psalm 114 verse 7 psalm 114 verse 7 The entire psalm is great. Tremble, earth, at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the God of Jacob. When was the last time, when was the last time that we sat in the presence of Jesus Christ? If John, the the disciple of Jesus, who, who was his best friend, and then in Revelation, he had this vision that said, Then I fell at his feet as if dead. When was the last time you trembled before God? When was the last time you had respect? I'm not talking about, Oh, I can't move an inch or he's going to strike me dead. No, when was the last time we regarded him as holy and had regard for his rules and statutes? Regard for what he's commanding us. My mom would say, guys, this is no joke. It isn't. God's not joking. He's given us authorities in place. I'll get to the whole deception thing. Um, go to First Timothy... Excuse me. Hebrews 3.13. I'm going through some scriptures here. Guys, verse 12 actually, Watch out, brother, so that there won't be in any of you an evil, unbelieving heart that departs from the living God. But encourage each other daily while it is still called today, so that none of you is hardened by sin's accusation, sin's betrayal, sin's deception, the deceitfulness of sin. The, de- the deceitfulness of sin. First Timothy 4. Hallelujah. Glory to God. First Timothy 4. Guys, this is 
This is seriously a last day message. Verse 1 and 2. Now the Spirit expressly, explicitly says that in latter times, 1 Timothy 4, some will depart from the faith paying attention to deceitful spirits. To deceitful spirits and the teachings of demons through the hypocrisy of liars whose consciences are seared. How do we know we're in the last days? Go to Matthew 24. Matthew 24, verse 3. While he was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples approached him privately and said, Tell us when will these things happen? He talks about the destruction of the temple, etc. And what is the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? Then Jesus replied to them, This is the answer to this. Watch out that no one deceives you. Many will come in my name, saying I'm the Messiah. They'll deceive many. They will look, even look, pleasing, kind, but it won't be Jesus. It won't be. They will give an appearance that, oh wow, this looks great. And it, and the messages will appeal to you. You'll feel good about them. But you'll know they're not right if you're in the Word of God. This is, and then he says it again. Oh, where is it? Um, Lord Jesus, where is it? Um, that if possible. They'll perform signs and wonders, if possible, verse 24, to lead astray even the elect. So, Philippians 2, this is where the protection comes in. Philippians 2. Do nothing, verse 3, out of rivalry or conceit. Actually, verse 1. If there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation of love, any fellowship with the Spirit, if any affection and mercy, fulfill my joy by thinking the same way. Or shall we say agreeing? Having the same love, sharing the same feelings, focused on one goal. Now, Paul is setting up do nothing out of rivalry or conceit. We just read in Galatians. But in humility, consider others as more important than yourself. What did Jesus do? Did he sit and said, wash my feet? No. He was willing to suffer so that we may live. Consider others more important than yourselves. Everyone should look not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of others. Here's, here's the pinnacle. Make your own attitude that of Christ Jesus. This is the mind you're to have in you. His attitude. And if you know the gospel, you keep reading it. Keep reading the gospels. Preach it to yourself. Christ Jesus existing in the form of God. Do not consider equality with God as something to be used for his own advantage. Guys, false teachers, they use things for their own advantages. I'm not naming names. I don't know. None of my business. I'm telling you what doesn't look like Christ. Christ died poor, naked, with nothing. Not even his dignity did he die with. He died with nothing. George Mueller, when he died, he had, I don't know, a couple hundred British pounds. 
to his own name. John Wesley, when he died, I think he had, uh, what was it, 80 pounds? 60 pounds? Or, uh, or, you know, he gave, you know, 5 or 10 pounds to each of his pallbearers. That's all he had. He emptied himself by assuming the form of a slave, taking on the likeness of men. He didn't come in royalty. And when he had come as a man, in his external form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even to death on the cross. That's important because that's, that's a crim- that, not just criminal. He was counted as somebody who is rebellious. And the very... Say the very heart of Christ was, I am a man under earth. I am, I am God. I am God in flesh. I am showing authority. I'm under authority. For this reason, God highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that the name of Jesus, every knee will bow, and those who are in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus is Lord. Here's a new one for you. He's Yahweh. Kurios in the Greek. To the glory of God the Father. Guys, God proved it. He sh- this is how we know what love is. By Jesus. By Jesus Christ laying down His life for us. That's how we know what love is. God, Jesus did what He saw His Father do. Which was pouring Himself out. God the Father poured Himself out. He gave of Himself. Let there be light. It had to come from somewhere. It came from Him. He is an ever-giving God. We sang this song, such an awesome God. So mighty, so generous, so wonderful. So selfless. He gave of Himself. That's the model. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Keep renewing your mind. Read your Bibles. Ask, pray in the Holy Spirit. Oh Jesus, make these words stick. If they're like gobbledygook, like bleh, you're reading it and it looks like bleh, 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 bleh. Holy Spirit, make this come alive and I'm not letting you go until you make this happen in me. 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 10. Paul is saying, look, we will see false miracles, false signs, false wonders. People, this will look Christian. Guys, this is what the entertainment type church is. I'm not speaking on, on any church, but you've got to talk about the blood of Jesus, the cross of Jesus. You've got to be encouraged in holiness. It's got to stir you and stir you. It's got to kill you from the inside out. It has to. If it's not, then what's the point? God's Word doesn't make you comfortable. Jesus does not make you comfortable. Sorry. He makes you holy. He makes you good. He does wonders in you. He takes you on adventures. When was the last time a soldier wanted to be comfortable in the military? God forbid. God forbid we want to be comfortable. We're soldiers. Yes, we are children. We're also soldiers. Guys, that warfare is not done until God calls us home. Guys, the signs and wonders are based on Satan's working. Every, verse 10, with every unrighteous deception among those who are perishing. And here's why they perish. They did not accept the love of the truth in order to be saved. Guys, truth is becoming more precious and harder to find. And yet, and and people don't want it. They run away from it. I can't tell you how many conversations I've been around. You start speaking truth. Oh man, look at the time I gotta go. God forbid that be us. It's time to shine as lights. 
It's time to speak the truth. Speak in love. It's time to pray. Praise we've never prayed before. It's time to be the difference. It's time to be the blue community. The community that is heavenly, not the brown community that is earthly. It's time to allow God to shine through us. Allow Him to work in you. Rip you apart from the inside out. Cause you to weep. Weep and mourn. Because in those ashes, that's when you see beauty. You don't see ashes, or excuse me, you don't see beauty outside of ashes. You see beauty through ashes. You don't get to the cross and stop there. You get through the cross. I'm crucified with Christ. I died with Christ. I raised with Christ. I'm seated with Christ. They perished because they did not accept the love of the truth in order to be saved. Guys, love the truth. Love it. Jesus is that truth. He testified before earthly rulers. He says, I've come to testify to the truth. Because here's what happens if you don't. For this reason, God, the devil, no, God sends them a strong delusion so that they will, not they might, they will believe what is false so that all will be condemned, those who did not believe the truth but enjoyed unrighteousness. Oh, what is unrighteousness? Galatians 5. Now the works of the flesh are obvious. This is verse 19. Sexual immorality. Now, in the church, I'm sure it happens. Paul tells Timothy, let there not e- that you, you to flee sexual immorality. In Romans, he says, let there not even be a hint. Are you watching filthy movies? Are you watching movies with scantily clad women? Would you want God to sit next to you watching that movie? Let's face it, he's there. What about when someone is misusing his name? What is the movie stirring you to do? I'm giving examples. Or even sexual innuendos. Folks, that's sexual morality. All of it. And and this is not just say, hey, yeah, pornography is bad. No, this is even in the very little things. What you do with the little things, you're going to do with the big things. Moral impurity. Profanity. For profanity's sake. I understand you stub your toe, you... Ah, oh, boogers! You know, okay, that, that, I'm not talking that. You know. Do you joke with the folk at work? Hear their dirty jokes? Or their gossip? Or their tearing down of... The, the supervisors or the bosses. Promiscuity. Are you unfaithful? And I'm not just talking marriage relations. Are you sharing your homey details, your the stuff that you share in your family and you are so quick to share with your friends, but you won't talk to your brothers or sisters or your spouse. Guys, that is a form of being loose with your connection. Idolatry. Something got a hold of your heart that's not Jesus? Are you in love with Jesus? Something that you can't just give up? Sorcery. Do you run to medicine? Do you divine the future? Do you guys love... Oh, th- this guy speaks on, on this interpretation of Revelation. Guys, that's divining. What's going to happen with 
you know, China and North Korea and whatever. Are you God to be responsible for that information? We have enough trouble for today. Hatreds. Have you forgiven completely? Have you asked Jesus, bring to my memory who I have not forgiven because I want to, I want to have a clean account? Have you even asked that question? Guys, this is holiness. This is basic, normal Christian life. This is not extreme, zealot, you know, Jesus freak. This is Christianity. This is following Christ. Strife. Are you, uh, are you in a fight with someone? That you can't reconcile? Can't seem to give? Jealousy. You want something someone else has? How about something that's out there that you don't have the money for? I want to do this. I want to do this. I want to be at home. I want to... <sighs> Guilty. You don't have it. God doesn't want you to have it. Stop trying. Why don't you ask Him? He's a good Father. Every good and perfect gift comes from the Father above with whom there's no variation of change. If you don't have it, it's because He doesn't want you to have it. Outbursts of anger. Something doesn't go your way, do you throw a temper tantrum like a two-year-old? I need to confess that. I'm sorry. I, I don't you know if it's an outburst of anger. I, I, I become demanding myself, personally. So, <sighs> Selfish ambitions. Are you willing to climb to the top and neglect your family? You don't want to take your family with you because they're going to be in your way? Dissensions. Are you willing to have groups among yourselves? Taking sides? What about all the disciples who are willing to lay themselves down You should be on the Lord's side. Stop stirring the pot. Start encouraging to look like Jesus. Factions. Excuse me. Dissension is more... Uh, what I just described as factions. Dissensions. Are you going against your leadership? Grumbling about your rulers? Those who are... who pay your paycheck... You pay them a bill, You're complaining about them, your government. Uh, no, there are some things we don't like. Is it against God's law, for example, to put on a face mask? Inconvenient, but not violating the law. These are examples. Envy, or rather, envy and, uh, and murders. You say, man, I can't stand that person. Yeah, you just killed him. He's always doing such and such. Yeah, you're envying. You should be able to go to bed with peace, shalom, completeness in you. Do you guys have voices in your head? You can't seem to think straight? I want to put a little plug in for Dr. Neil T. Anderson's Freedom in Christ, uh, Steps to Freedom, Freedom in Christ Discipleship. An excellent help, excellent help. Very methodical, goes through everything that I'm describing about the fruits of the flesh. Where you go through issues of forgiveness and issues of bitterness and bondage, etc. Where you can't confess these things and be free. Christ set us free, guys. Drunkenness. You take substances to numb your reality, to escape. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean just with alcohol. It can. What about food? Where you, ch you go to a physical substance to deny 
reality. To deny difficulty. I'd rather go spend time with family rather than deal with my own difficulties and the fact that I'm a that I need forgiveness, the fact that I'm holding on to a grudge. I'd rather go, um, I've got better things to do or go feasting or anything to fill the time. Physical substances. Now, carousing, that's more of an emotional one. Uh, an emotional checking out through entertainment. You guys spending time in entertainment? Are you guys... Do you guys have a vision to, to, to you listeners? Do you have a vision of eternity that is specifically the path that God has for you? If you don't, get before His face. Ask Him for the vision and write it down. Without vision, you're going to perish. And anything similar carousing, that, that's, that's a big one. Are you guys being entertained? Do you guys just want to have a good time? Look, I don't want to deal with these difficulties. I don't want to deal with the fact that I messed up. It's somebody else's fault. I don't want to have to face my own humility. I don't want to have to face my failures. I just want to eat, sleep, drink, and go to bed. I don't want to face reality. I'd rather do something else to occupy my mind. Paul says, Romans 12, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. How? Through testing. That by testing, you may discern what is the good and acceptable will of God. Trials of life, difficulties. I tell you about these things in advance, as I told you before, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But, I love the things in the Scripture says, but. Because it's for as much as one way leaning, it is so the other way. The fruit of the Spirit is love. You denying yourself, giving to others where it's uncomfortable. Joy. Do you have a song in your heart? Do you just bask in the goodness of God? Peace. Are you complete? with not a care in the world? Patience, are you willing to wait 25 years for a promise like Abraham did? Or waiting for a city that its builder and maker were not of human hands? Kindness, are you a 350-pound linebacker able to pet a kitten and just hold that kitty cat or baby? You want to be are you willing to cry, you men, men out there, uh, towards others? Goodness, are you willing to stand up for what's right, regardless of the cost to you? Faith or faithfulness, are you willing to persevere, stick it out until God moves you, regardless of how you feel? Gentleness. Are you willing to deny your rights? If somebody go cuts you in a line and you say, "You know what? God bless them. They need to. They probably needed it more than I do." Self control. To say, "You know what? I'm okay. I don't need that extra bite of cake." You know, I don't. I don't have a need to have a alcoholic drink. I. Uh, I, I ate enough. You know, I'm. I'm choosing to fast on this day. I want to seek the Lord. Examples. Against such things, there's no law. The, and, and here's the interesting thing about this verse. The law was meant to condemn. You can't be condemned for this stuff. Now, those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, we must also follow the Spirit. We must not become con conceited thinking you are better than the next... Well, oh, that person's only been a believer two years and, and I've been a believer 18 years and I've denied myself and I've gone through these trials and what... Stop. Provoking one another, envying one another. 
This is how you keep from deception. Look at Jesus, who denied himself completely, and say, okay, Lord, how do I do this? Show me. Because that's truth. That is the truth you hang on to. That's the truth you love. You have to love it. You have to be ready to defend it to your death. If you have not read the book Fair Sunshine, the story of the Scottish Presbyterians who denied their lives for the sake of Christ because Christ was more worthy than anything they could have had here on earth. And they did so. Be encouraged in your faith. We are in the end days. Truth is scattered in the streets. There's no hope on earth proper. Jesus is our living hope. You've got to love him. You've, you've got to be, for at all costs, I don't care what it costs, Jesus. Take me where I need to be. Now, Father in heaven, I've delivered my soul. I've given what you've given. Oh, Jesus, take us to where we need to be. No matter what it costs, because you are there. And if you are not there, I don't want to be there. And if you are, if you are moving, I don't want to be where I am. Holy Spirit, let us not be left behind. Let us keep moving. Let us keep fighting. Oh Jesus. Oh God. Oh God, let us not give up. Oh Holy Spirit, let us stir up one another with these words. Let us be like the 120 in that upper room. Just like, like Moses came down from the mountain, that the 120 came out of the upper room and preached the gospel and loved not their lives even unto death. Holy Spirit, I pray for everybody who's hearing this. Oh God, please send this word out. Oh Jesus, it's not about us. Jesus, it's about your words. Oh God, it's about you. Lord, destroy this gospel of entertainment. Destroy the social clubs. Destroy the ones who don't want to have to deal with the cross and blood of Jesus. Oh God, strengthen us as a people to spur others on, to cry out, come out of her, come out of her, my people, come out of Babylon, touch not the unclean things. Holy Spirit, make us holy. Generate in us a zeal. You said, Jesus, that you would put rivers of living water in us. Holy Spirit, send forth, give us boldness as you stretch forth your hand with signs and wonders. Show us how to preach. Show us how to be faithful at home, among our kids, our families, at work, to where those who see that they behold the face of Jesus among us, that we may decrease so that you may increase. Jesus, help us to run for our lives and to encourage others to do the same. Lord, I pray that the pastors and ministers of the gospel would be willing to run into those burning buildings and say, run for your life. Oh God, let us not be a complacent church anymore. Jesus, I pray now in this desperate hour that we would be a victorious church. One that is not afraid. One that cares nothing about dignity anymore to our own personal reputation. Oh God, we forsake our reputation. 
Oh Jesus, it's your reputation that's on the line, not ours. Let us not be afraid of losing ours. Holy Spirit, let us lose ourselves to find you. Jesus, we are lax in our prayer. We give up too easily, too quickly, because it hurts. Abba, people are giving their lives in other lands, and we won't lift a finger. Stir it up in this country once more. Protect this beloved country of ours that has been founded by Jesus-loving people. Oh God, protect us from civil war. If we do enter one, oh Jesus, let the ones who are on your side side with you. Oh God, protect your righteous ones. May we stand in the day of trouble, faithful. May we pass these things down to our children, to the third and fourth generation. Help us, O oh Lord. We don't have much time. Send forth your fire in Jesus' name. Amen.